I'm Mitch from MoTeC, and I'm going to show you the Gen 5 wiring harness and uh, what each connector does. So you use up some confusion here. We'll, uh, we'll start on this side, on the driver's side. This is pretty much the main trunk of the harness. You want to leave this plastic piece on because it bolts back onto the water pump and it holds everything in position it needs to be. You'll have this 12 gauge wire, the blue fusible link. This will run underneath the intake and to the stud of the alternator. That provides battery power to our fuse box down here. So this would be hot at all times to the, the constant fuses. And you also have your ignition turn on. This pink wire, if you put power to that, it'll turn on the relay, allowing all your ignition fuses to come to life, 12 volts. So right now, we have it jumped, the pink wire, to the battery. I'll unplug it. You plug it in, you should hear the relay click, the throttle body comes to life. That's a, a good sign that you have everything hooked up on the engine. You have three grounds. There's a ground behind each cylinder head. Got one here. Same place here. Then your next ground is on the other side. It's kind of hard to see, but it's going to be by the air pump. It goes against the cylinder, the block right there. Those are your three main grounds. They must all be hooked up where you have lots of issues. Of course, you have your three main connections on the computer. If you have a six-speed auto, it needs to be plugged into the transmission. If you not plug it in, you'll have no communication when you go to read it. And the throttle body won't work. So you'll have issues there. Same thing with 8-speed, it must be plugged in. The 8-speed TCM is external, and you'll see it off, coming off the harness. So once you have all your grounds hooked up, your powers, you can test it all right here. All you need to do is hook up the 12-gauge the 12 gauge wire I talked about, ignition, then hook up your ground to the engine block. And a good way to test it, with the engine and chassis. That way if there's any issues you know ahead of time. Uh, next, the throttle won't always work. It, it kind of depends on what operating system is in it. You can look at your scanner, you'll see the TPS change. The throttle usually only works when the engine is running. But it is it does hum when you plug it in the first time, so that tells you all the connections are good there. Uh, now I'll point out some of these various connections so you have a rough idea what everything does. Starting here, these two, I believe are for your high pressure mechanical fuel pump for the rails. One tells you pressure, the other one's a, pretty much a controller. Up here, this is your map sensor. Down here, that's gonna be your, your EVAP connection. Next on the water pump, that's your coolant sensor. Going along the cylinder head, these are each coil. Pretty simple there. We'll go along the back. So these are for your fuel injectors. They can be swapped, so that's a problem. The short, the short run here is going to go to the driver's side. The long run will go to the passenger side. So definitely make sure that these are correct or else you just swapped the fine order of your injectors. So that's, that's it for your connections there. Um, back here, you'll have your transmission connector. Um, this is actually on an eight speed, but I'm testing a six speed harness. That's why it's not plugged into the transmission. I'm going over here, you have a knock sensor. It's up in the, it's usually covered with a heat shield. You got bank one knock sensor. And we'll go to the front engine. pretty hard to see by your air pump. This is your cam, your cam plug will plug in there. And there's a, a, a plastic channel the harness runs through. Just bolt that back up, everything will plug right in. Can't really mess it up. Now, you'll use your factory 
factory AC compressor. This will plug in. This is AC clutch. And you can't see, but on behind the back of the alternator is another plug just like this. That is for the variable displacement. You'll plug that in as well. This three pin, that is for your AC high pressure. It's very important to have the sensor plugged in when you run it. That way your, your engine knows the pressure and it won't turn your fan on high if you're running a GM fan. Next coming along here, as you can see these are not plugged in, just so you can see. This is your crank sensor. So it's going to go behind the starter, right in the block. These connectors are very finicky to lock in. Basically you have to just make sure it's aligned flush and uh, they'll snap in and to unsnap it. Again these will be just flush and it'll let you push it in but they are kind of a pain. This is oil level and this is your bank 2 knock sensor. All those go along the bottom of the engine. Your coils all line up. You can't mess those up. Those go in order. Alternator control and of course alternator power that comes from the battery. And the battery to that, our 12 gauge cable from the fuse box, and you'll be set. Um, if you come back to the rear again, Joey. Usually we have to remove this plastic piece. You might have to cut it off. It's really close to hitting the firewall. So to be safe, go ahead and uh, cut it off. And it should save you a little time in case it is a really tight fit. some cam cam sensors here but these will stay plugged in they run into that junction at the bottom that the harness plugs into so it has its own separate harness that stays on the engine all right so now I'll show you once you put power to it you can go ahead and check to make sure you have communication <clears throat> I'll go ahead and reset this all right, the throttle body comes alive. All right, so we have communication. If you have a, this is an old scanner, so it is not updated for this 2015. I'm just putting a truck in it. It will still see a lot of stuff. I'm gonna go to view data. All right, not everything works. I just want to show you the throttle issue. Where you have to check it on a scanner. You'll see movement, but because it's not running, it's not going to show it. All right. So um, you see the throttle is actuating here. The computer itself is just inhibiting it. That shows you everything is working correctly. This connector down here, this is for our emissions harness. So you'll run the emissions harness down the chassis, just like Gen 4's, and it's plug and play there. This, our current version, we're gonna put a, a blue uh, crush fit fitting on here so you can uh, hook your AC compressor power. This will turn the clutch on to turn on the AC compressor. And this is a brown, green, or brown, yellow. It depends on what harness. But I'm gonna put a red connector on it. This is for your fan PWM output. So this is gonna control the signal of your fan. It'll control the speeds. That's pretty much the only two wires that you'll have hanging out there that you need to splice in. On this five pin connector, we're only using four wires. But we got ignition. This is crank and cam signals. And green is AC pressure. But these will pretty much be pl plug and play to your Jeep harness that we modify. And this blue wire is for a Pentastar. It runs into your Jeep high pressure side. You tap that in for your AC to work. This is the 28 pin connector we use. This runs through the firewall. 
So right now on the inside of your vehicle you're just going to have your, your pedal, the connector, and your OB2 port and one ground like so it go to the firewall. And this is just a simple way to test it before you drop the body and make sure everything's functional. Alright, thank you.